Have you ever looked at a guitar specs on paper and wonder what it would actually sound like in real life? Well, if you answered yes to that, then today is your day because I'm gonna be sharing with you 10 of my favorite tone woods and what tonal profile you can expect from each. Hey, TAC family, and welcome to episode 172 of the Acoustic Tuesday Show. This show is designed to bring fun, focus, and progress to your guitar journey through my weekly Guitar Geek list, plus success stories from your fellow TAC members. In fact, this week, you're gonna meet a fellow Guitar Geek that's also a goalie friend of mine named Kroz. Kroz was smack dab in the middle of a guitar plateau. Then he found his people, and that sparked his progress and his creativity. He's now playing every single day. Now, you're going to learn about Cross here in just a little bit. Plus, you're going to get some acoustic guitar news you can use, including three different performances, one from my 13-year-old son, a new album that you need to be aware of, and then lastly, a quote from an unlikely acoustic guitar hero. Well, he's actually an electric guitar hero, but his quote applies to acoustic guitar. We're gonna get to that in a bit, but first let's dive into the ocean of tone and talk about tone woods. So here's the deal. There are a ton of different tone woods out there and by no means is today's show gonna be an exhaustive list of all tone woods. After reviewing 600 plus guitars now, I've taken a liking to certain tone woods and I'm gonna present 10 of my favorites to you today. And we're gonna divvy that up into two different categories, common top woods and common backwoods. In fact, I have five of each. So grab your scuba gear or your flippers and goggles. I don't know, whatever you use to dive. We're gonna go ahead and dive into tone woods right now. Let's start at the top with tone woods that are commonly used for the tops of guitars. Now, before we dig in, let me say this. I'm gonna be giving you a general description of what the tone wood sounds like based on my experience. Nothing beats or replaces an in-person evaluation of tone, meaning holding the guitar in your hands and playing it for yourself and actually hearing how it truly sounds. This is simply meant to give you a list of tone woods so that when you read it on a spec sheet, you can kind of say, oh, the guitar may sound like this or maybe in this tonal direction. Now that I've said that, let's dig in. The first tone wood I wanna feature is Sitka Spruce. Sitka Spruce is a great top wood because it's articulate, it's balanced, it's responsive, yet it has this internal compression, meaning if you're a heavier handed strummer, it has kind of a limit. It won't keep getting louder, like another tone wood I'll feature here in just a moment. Now, the best example of Sitka Spruce that I've ever experienced is a Larave LO3R. This is a guitar that I recorded my first album with that I unfortunately sold. And I'm kicking myself every single day I hear songs from that album because the guitar sounded fantastic. And you're in luck because, well, it's not the exact guitar, but it's another Larave LO3R that I think sounds amazing. It's brought to you by Heartbreaker Guitars. Let's have a listen. Next stop on our Tonewood tour is Adirondack Spruce or Red Spruce. This top wood is powerful, it's loud, it's direct, and it has ample headroom, meaning the harder you strum, the harder you pick, it seems to continually give off volume. It's like, it's like Sitka Spruce, but boosted up on steroids. Adirondack Spruce continually impresses me. I love playing guitars with Adirondack because when you get excited and you really wanna dig in, the guitar is there, the top wood is there to match your enthusiasm. The best example of an Adirondack Spruce top that I've ever played was a Boucher Heritage Goose Triple O. It was a 12 fret guitar, a triple O body, and this was the finest example of red spruce I could come up with, and you have to hear it. Here's a quick sample. Cedar is the next tone wood that I wanna feature, and cedar is, is really outstanding. It's warm, it's light, it's responsive, and it almost issues a bell-like tone that's subtly reserved. 
The best example of a cedar top guitar I ever played was built by my friend Mitch Nelson. While I don't have a demo of that guitar for you to hear, I do have another fine example, and it's a Taylor 514 CE. It's an older version when they used to come with Western red cedar tops. And I thought this was a great example because Taylors are generally known or generally accepted to be brighter sounding guitars. And this 514, because of the red cedar top, it has a little bit more warmth to it. And I think this is exactly what Cedar does so well. So let's have a listen. The fourth tone wood that's found on tops that I wanna feature is Swiss spruce. Now this was a tough decision because I was like, Swiss spruce, Italian spruce, Euro spruce, do I lump them all together? And I, and I thought, I have the most experience with Swiss spruce, so I'm gonna go with that. Swiss spruce to me issues a, a crystalline tone, a, a very defined tone. It has this uh, sense of immediacy to it, and it's very prompt in its responsiveness. And to me, the best example that I've played is uh, luckily, and I'm very grateful to own this guitar, is this custom OM I have from Martin. I call it the Tuxedo. It has a high altitude Swiss spruce top matched with bird's eye maple back and sides. And yes, those back and sides certainly add to the crystalline quality of that guitar, but I think 80% of the tone is coming from the top, and I think this is a fine example of Swiss spruce. Redwood is next on my list, and Redwood to me is, it's proud, it's balanced, it's, it issues a beautiful tone. It's almost like cedar, but with more definition and clarity. And I think one of the best examples being made in the guitar world today using Redwood uh, from a guitar maker that makes a you know fair amount of guitars is the Santa Cruz fingerstyle model. We're actually gonna listen to one right now and I think it encapsulates everything that is beautiful about Redwood from the way that it looks to the way that it sounds. Plus, I think you'll recognize the guitar reviewer. Now let's move on to tone woods that are commonly used for the back and sides of guitars. Now there are two incidents on this list where the species of wood not only works as a back and side wood, but it also works as a top wood. In fact, we're gonna kick it off with one of them, but I'm actually gonna focus and look at this through the perspective of these woods being used on the back and sides of an instrument. The first one I wanna talk about is mahogany. Mahogany issues a, a sweet sound that uh, can be crispy or airy or even, even crunchy. I've heard to it referred to as crunchy, but it's a, defined, it's a defined tone. And a great example is a Thompson DCMA. Now this variety of mahogany is Cuban mahogany. And to the best of my knowledge, Knowledge, it's a little bit more reflective than a standard mahogany. Maybe it's a, uh, maybe it's a little bit harder than a standard mahogany, but nonetheless, I think it embodies the tone that mahogany issues. So let's go ahead and give it a listen. Next up on the Tonewood list is Rosewood. And I know you're asking, well, what kind of Rosewood? Because you can have East Indian Rosewood, Guatemalan Rosewood, Brazilian Rosewood, uh, Coco Bolo, which is also Mexican Rosewood. There's all these different varieties of Rosewoods out there, and they all have their own unique tonal profiles. But for the sake of brevity, I wanted to lump them all together. So. Tone geeks, I'm sorry, but I, I need to lump them all together uh, because they do share some tonal traits. And I think of rosewoods as, they almost have this marimba-like quality. They're rich in overtones. They have great sustain. Uh, they're very musical, okay? And I'm talking rosewoods broadband here. 
There's a great example of a rosewood guitar, I should say a rosewood guitar, a guitar with rosewood back and sides that a good friend of mine, I believe just made his own. It's his first guitar with rosewood back and sides. It's a Froggy Bottom Model K and it sounds absolutely stunning. Specifically, the rosewood on this guitar is Guatemalan rosewood. Let's give it a listen. Maple is next up on my list, and to me, maple has this clean, clear, edgy, shiny tonal profile. For those of you who have known me for a while, I, I haven't always loved maple. It took me playing a couple guitars where maple was treated in such a way to bring out its tonal best that really changed my attitude towards the tone wood. One of those guitars is a Gibson J200 True Vintage that I reviewed. This is a big guitar, it's got maple back and sides, and I thought that this particular combination of a large guitar and maple back and sides was magical because it brought down the bass of a big guitar and allowed the guitar to speak clearly. Go ahead and have a listen and be the judge for yourself. The Almighty Koa is next up on my list, and Koa is prized for both its beauty in looks and its beauty in tone. It's clear yet dark, it has this glassy, almost shiny sound, and Koa is the type of tone wood that its character almost changes with age. It starts out rather bright, but then mellows out. And I know you could say that for generally any tone wood, but I think it's most noticeable, at least in my experience, with Koa. Now I found a great example of Koa and it's almost glassy-like tonal texture on a Weisenborn. Now a Weisenborn is a uh, lap style guitar played with a slide and the video footage I found is my old Dobro teacher, or I should say lap style guitar teacher, Rob Anderlich, based in Chicago, Illinois. He has a wonderful Tony Francis style one Weisenborn that sounds incredible. And to me, it embodies all the things that Koa is. And here it is. <laughs> The last tone wood that I want to feature is a little bit of a curveball and one that you might not expect to be on my list, and that is Cherry. And there's one single guitar that made me fall in love with this wood as a back and side wood on an instrument. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, but Cherry, what does it sound like? Well, to me, it's, it's mahogany-like with a little bit more meat on its bones. It's, it's lush, it's full-bodied. It has a warmth to it that is a little bit warmer than mahogany, less crispy, more warm. I feel like it's a cooking show all of a sudden. But the single guitar that made me fall in love with Cherry is the Martin SWOMGT, the Sustainable Wood Series OM size guitar with a gloss top. Aesthetically, it's a guitar that's gorgeous, but it features Cherry back and sides. And I think, well, maybe you'll agree with me. You can judge for yourself, but let's go ahead and listen to the SWOMGT, a clear standout guitar, in my opinion, that utilizes Cherry as the wood for the back and sides. All right, we've made it through my 10 favorite tone woods. Five tops, five backs and sides, and now I have a question for you. If you were to build a custom guitar today, if budget was not an issue, if I said, here, you've just won the lottery, all the money in the world, and you had to build a custom guitar, what would the top would be? And what would the back and side would be? Let me know in the comments below. I'm really curious of what combinations you like. For me, let me see if I can just pick one off the top of my head right now. I would say redwood and rosewood. That's what I'm gonna go with, redwood and rosewood. But what's yours? Let me know in the comments below. It's now time to meet your fellow guitar geek, Jim Cross Crosby from Oshawa, Ontario, Canada. In fact, just a couple of weeks ago, you saw Cross's guitar signal. And this week, you're gonna learn a little bit more about Kroz's story. Here's a quick synopsis of Kroz's guitar journey so far. 
I went to a guitar teacher for a while, but I plateaued out. I became friends with my teacher and we chatted for about 25 minutes out of the 30 minute lesson. That's when I looked online to see what else was out there. I joined Fretboard Wizard and then got into Tony's Acoustic Challenge. This got me into playing every day and practicing every day. June 2019 was a magical month for me because I attended the Acoustic Life Festival. Quote, I've never met a more welcoming and supportive bunch of people in my life. I became more involved in the community, which allowed me to give back to other guitar geeks and help them on their journeys. Then I started doing virtual open mics, which helped me a ton during the pandemic. I'm gonna stop the story there for one second because those virtual open mics were so helpful to Jim that he actually submitted a guitar gratitude with the subject matter being that he was grateful for those virtual open mics. Here's what he had to say. What I'm gra grateful for at this point is Friday Night Live open mics. Uh, thanks to Vic G for starting this 29 weeks ago, but what a great group of people. The most supportive, genuine people I've ever known. Uh, it's something we all look forward to every Friday night. It's a chance to connect, chance to uh, heal through some good music, and it's just darn fun place to be every Friday night. And in closing, Cross just wanted to say one more thing to all you guitar geeks. Tack has literally changed my life. I'm having so much more fun playing, I'm writing, creating more than I ever thought possible. And what it really comes down to is that creating music is the most wonderful gift that's inside all of us. We owe it to ourselves and everyone around us to share this gift with each other. I wanna thank Kroz so much for sharing his story, sharing his guitar gratitude, and just being a part of the TAC community. I had the chance to meet Kroz at the Acoustic Life Festival, as he mentioned there, and it was just a delight. We bonded over, well, being a guitar geek, of course, but also being hockey fans. He's also a goalie. And, you know, after that weekend was over, Kroz pulled me aside and he's, he, he said, he said, this was amazing. And, and I could see right there that it unlocked this creative side of him. He was writing songs. He actually ended up writing a song about that very weekend and performing it at a virtual open mic. And it's just so cool to see somebody blossom and really, really kind of just eke out every little ounce of awesomeness out of their guitar journey. And Kroz is a great example for all of us guitar geeks. So thank you so much again for sharing your story, Kroz, and may your guitar journey continue to blossom. Now we're gonna go on a little bit of a trip. We've got two guitar snools that we're gonna have a look at today. One of them is located in South Carolina, South Carolina, South Carolina. The other is located uh, north of the border in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. Let's start in South Carolina, get warm, and then head up to the Great White North. Here's David Shackford from Aiken, South Carolina. He has an Alvarez RD8, Ovation CC057, a Zager ZAD 80 CE, a Recording King RPH, an Ibanez EW 2012 ASE, an Alvarez AGM 660 CE, and a Martin Special serial number 22373386. Now it's time to get your coats on because we're going to Canada. This is Mike McCreary from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada, and he's holding a Yamaha F310. And from left to right, we have a Dean AXS Dreadnought a Dean Steel Resonator, the Aloha model, and a Fender Squire Thinline Telecaster. Also included is a DIY build from Solo Guitars, and that is a Telecaster style guitar that he built himself. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, those are rad guitar snows, I wanna submit my guitar snow so I can be featured on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Well, I encourage you to do so. It's three simple steps. Number one, go to AcousticTuesday.store and pick out your favorite guitar snow shirt. Number two, after that shirt arrives, go ahead and put it on and take a picture amongst all of your guitars. And then the last step, go to AcousticLife.tv, click on the submit link in the top menu, and from there you can upload your picture and tell your story of your guitar arsenal. Name the guitars, give an interesting story behind the one that sticks out the most to you and that we would find the most interesting. Let's go ahead and rewind time, turn back the clock, whatever phrase you wanna use, and I wanna go back to episode 170 where we talked about, well, tone, how to talk tone with your fellow guitar geeks. There were some great comments left on that episode and I wanna feature a few of them right now. The first one comes from Plume at Pixels and they say this, Okay, I ended up on one of your videos while looking after nice presentations of bourgeois guitars. And let's face it, this is the channel about acoustic guitar I was seeking without knowing it. Somewhere between a genuine love of the instrument, especially the woods, and the joy of playing the acoustic way. I feel home here, thanks, from Bordeaux, France. 
Well, thank you for the comment. Thank you for watching and welcome to the Acoustic Tuesday family. I'm glad you found the channel that makes you feel like home. Our next comment comes from Rick Murchison. That name might ring a bell because we featured his guitar snow a couple episodes back. And Rick says this in response to a question I asked. The question was, well, I flashed a picture of Alien from the movie Alien playing an acoustic guitar. And I asked what song Alien was playing. Well, Rick says, Alien song? Why, one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people eater, of course. And it's funny because that's the type of song where you hear the title and immediately, if you know the song, you kind of start singing it. So thanks, Rick. That's going to be caught in my head uh, the rest of the day. Our next comment comes from Wiggo Carlson, again in response to the alien question, but he also included an artist we should check out. He says this, the alien is playing Paul McCartney's Yesterday, and he even wrote down some lyrics that alien would be singing. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. Now Sigourney Weaver spoiled my day. Oh, I believe in yesterday. A fantastic little twist on those lyrics there. He also goes on to say this. Now I want to bring your attention to a Dutch fingerstyle guitar player, Casper Esman. Check out his YouTube channel. In my opinion, he's a great guy and he has a number of really great guitars. Well, I want to thank you, Wiggo, for leaving that comment. And also I want to thank everyone for, for leaving comments in regard to the Alien song. Um, there were so many great responses. A couple that stick out, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, uh, Rush's Tom Sawyer, Hey Joe by Jimmy Hendrix, and of course, Wild Thing as well. Uh, just some awesome, funny responses there. So thank you for participating in that little flight of guitar fancy. Our next comment comes from Victor Gonzalez, and he says this, I've been watching you on YouTube for over two years, and I finally took the plunge and joined TAC in September 2020. I'm 57, and after four, a 40-year hiatus, I picked up the guitar again. Very happy to both be playing again and investing in TAC. Money well spent. Well, thanks so much for saying that, Victor, and welcome to the TAC family. Uh, thanks for watching the show, and I'm so happy to hear that you picked up the guitar again after a 40-year hiatus. That's, that's a, a very difficult thing to do, and you did it. So you should be super happy with yourself for just the act of picking up the guitar. Now it sounds like you're playing regularly. regularly. So uh, congratulations to you. That's, that's really awesome. Our final comment comes from Kate, and she says this. Yes, on this series. I feel like whenever I try to talk about guitars with other people, I feel like a noob. I am a noob, but I would like it to be less obvious. Well, I think in a way, we're all kind of noobs, especially when trying to talk about tone because everybody has their own vocabulary. That's actually a really good thing. In that episode 170, and if you haven't caught it, make sure to check it out because I break down talking about tone into four different categories. Now, these categories are ones that I developed to help me keep things simple and to help me kind of standardize how I spoke about guitars. There are other ways. This is just a way that worked for me, and I wanted to share it with you because, well, hopefully you found it helpful. Now it's time for one of my favorite parts of the show, and that is acoustic guitar news you can use. I've got about five different headlines for you today, uh, three different performances, uh, including one from my 13-year-old son who played drums on a song that I love, and I couldn't be more proud of him. He really did a great job. You'll see that here in a little bit. Uh, there's been a new album released by an incredible acoustic guitar player. I'll let you know about that. And then also a quote from somebody who you wouldn't associate with the acoustic guitar, but the quote really hit home for me, so I want to share it with you. But let's start on the top of my list, and that is the NAM show. I put it in quotes because, well, it was all online this year, and I thought that was incredible. Because from the comfort of your own home, you can just go on YouTube, search for your favorite manufacturer, and chances are they have a product release video. And to me, the star of the show, the company that really did a great job of building excitement and giving us insight into what they're up to, was Gibson. In fact, the uh, video that J.C. Curley did to kind of announce their plans for 2021 was really awesome. He kind of gave a little bit of a recap of 2020 and some things they did when, when COVID came along, but also really shared some excitement about 2021. And uh, just so you can feel that excitement, if you haven't caught the video, let's check out a small little bit of it right now. So Gibson USA and Custom Shop here in Nashville, lots of excitement, lots of new guitars coming at you in 21. Let's shift over to Bozeman, Montana, the home of Gibson Acoustic Guitars, home of originals and modern collections. And we're gonna be putting a lot of energy at the Gibson Acoustic Custom Shop and bringing some partnerships, signature models with artists like Orianthe and even maybe a little Tom Petty action coming at you this year. 
Next on my list is one of three performances that I'm gonna be sharing with you today. And this one comes from Steve Earle. He participated in the Rolling Stone magazine series, In My Room, and it's literally just him sitting down and playing songs. But these just these aren't just any old songs. Uh, earlier this year, he released an album of covers of his son's songs, Justin Towns Earl, who passed away uh, later last year. And that's pretty much the subject of Steve's performance here. He covers a couple of Justin's songs, but the last song he plays on this performance, and actually the last song on his album, is a song called Last Words that he wrote to commemorate Justin Towns Earl. And it is, it's a, it's an incredible song. It really, um, well, you know, words can't really describe it. Let's just go ahead and take a quick listen to it right now. Last time we spoke was on the phone And we hung up Now you come Last thing I said was I love you Your last words to me were I love you on to a new album that you need to be aware of, and it's brought to us by Bob Minner. Bob Minner is the type of player that you can hand him anything with strings and he'll be able to play it. So I'm gonna call him an incredible musician because Yes, he plays guitar, but he plays many other things and he plays them very well. He just released a brand new album entitled Solo, which is, well, as the name would indicate, him sitting down and playing songs. It is delightful and I strongly encourage you to check it out. You can go to his website, and I have it written down here, minnerguitar.com, M-I-N-N-E-R guitar.com. Uh, you can listen to previews there, and of course you can order physical copies there as well. He just got a batch of CDs in, so if you're a, you're a physical music type of person, uh, make sure to check out his website and order this album. It, like I said, is, is absolutely delightful. Moving on to my next news item, this is a performance from the NAM show, again, the online NAM show, just a couple of weeks ago, and it was brought to us by Martin Guitar. They had John Mayer playing, I believe he played three or four songs, and I thought this particular performance was so awesome. It was so good to see John sit down with three different acoustic guitars, beautiful guitars. He plays an OMJM. He plays his stage co his stagecoach model, and he plays, I want to say, late 60s or early 70s Martin D45. It's just him and the acoustic guitar, and he's playing uh, some, some incredible songs, and you get this glimpse into John's playing that I don't think you get when he's on stage with, you know, thousands and thousands of people around. Speaking of performances, I have one more to share with you, and it comes from my 13-year-old son, Aiden, and his buddy, Calvin. Uh, they go to the same school, and their school was putting on an online talent show because they're not going to school in person right now. It's all via Zoom or, you know, whatever online platform they use. And unfortunately, well, I guess actually fortunately, uh, they still did the talent show, and they had this digital outlet to, to use. So his buddy, Calvin, played guitar. My son, Aiden, was on drums and their teacher was on bass and vocals. And they put together this video and I'm watching it and I'm like, wow, I wish I had played music when I was 13 years old because I didn't, I got to start much later. And to see them play together in kind of like a band setting, just warmed my heart. Like I said, I couldn't be more proud of him. He put in a lot of hard work and I wanna share with you a quick little piece of it right now. Uh, this is them playing the Green Day song, Welcome to Paradise. And again, my son on drums, so here it is.
I've got one more piece of news for you today, and it's a quote that I found, and it comes from an unlikely source. And I say this because this individual, this player, Kirk Hammett, the guitar player for Metallica, we of course would associate with electric guitar, the wah-wah pedal, distortion, pretty much everything that's not acoustic. But he had a quote in an interview. He did a, a, an interview for Gibson's newest TV series, uh, Gibson Icons. I don't know if it's the newest series, but I found it recently, so uh, it's new to me. Uh, and it's, yeah, the series is called Gibson Icons, and they interviewed Kirk Hammett. And he had this to say about his approach to guitar. I constantly uh, uh, rejoice in the fact that I, I am staying true to playing guitar rather than working guitar. And for me, it's such a, like, it's such a big difference. I always, you know, I'm playing my guitar. I'm not working my guitar. I'm not struggling my guitar. I'm playing my guitar and I'm having a good time. And this is play. And it just all, also happens to be, you know, my life commitment and how I make a living. And, you know, I'd be doing this right now if, it, you know, if I wasn't in Metallica. And I'd probably be, you know, I don't know, like I said, a guitar teacher or something, you know. But I would definitely have the same commitments because for me, it's just like guitar playing helps me so much. It saved my life. It, it calms down this thing that's inside of me. And I couldn't agree with him more. To hear a guitarist that I truly look up to say that they focus on playing the guitar and having fun as opposed to working at the guitar was, it really resonated with me. It was incredibly empowering because I've always thought the same thing. I wanna play my guitar and I wanna have fun with it because that's the reason I got into guitar in the first place. And the more I have fun, the more I wanna pick it up. The more I pick it up, the better routine I have and the routine segues directly into the progress that all of us guitar geeks want. So thank you, Kirk Hammett, for saying that out loud. Uh, it, was, it was, like I said, very much empowering for, well, all of us guitar geeks, acoustic or electric, it doesn't matter. And on that quote, I think it's a great time to wrap up the Acoustic Tuesday show. But let's take a, let's take a quick sneak peek into next week and see what I'll be chatting about. Next week, I'm gonna target Nick Drake's tone. I'm gonna do my best to mimic Nick Drake's tone with the help of another video that I found on YouTube by Josh Turner. I'm gonna go through his tips, add in a little bit of mine, and hopefully at the end, we have a good replication of the tone that Nick Drake achieves so expertly. That's all happening next week on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Remember, you can catch the show every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. here on YouTube. And also remember this, your guitar progress, your guitar success, however you define it, is directly related to your guitar routine. So invest the time in your guitar routine and make sure to have fun every day that you play. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for being a guitar geek. And remember, guitar geeks unite. I'll see you next Tuesday on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Cheers.